Hello and welcome to Making a Choice in Google 2. Uh, this is Dan Trockman and uh, I'm going to walk you through uh, how to create a choice activity in Moodle 2. Choice, by the way, is an activity, it's a simple single question activity designed to provide feedback uh, and low effort for responses in making decisions in your class, your club, uh, or even uh, registration for professional development. Um, or picking choices for what kind of ice cream you're going to have in class tomorrow. So that's the example I'm going to use uh, for this, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to click right here on Add an Activity or Resource. And because this is an interactive activity, in other words, students are going to somehow interact or make a click um, for content, um, it's here under Activities. And by Alpha, it's right here under Choice. I'm going to add this choice activity, and in this case, I'm going to ask students in the course to make a choice on what kind of ice cream uh, that they would like to have. Since I have 20 students in my course, and I only have five scoops of each ice cream, of four different types of ice cream, I can use choice to actually limit the number of choices that can be made in the course in order to uh, make for some sort of a limit in resources. And I'll show you how to do that at this time. So choice name, please choose your ice cream flavor. And in here, I'm just going to have some sample text. Please choose your ice cream flavor for to be served in class tomorrow. Unfortunately, I've just figured out that in this particular activity, um, restricting it to a time period does not put this in the calendar. I filed a bug report with Moodle. But at this time, if I made the choice that had to be made for class tomorrow, it doesn't pop up in the calendar. So you'd still want to inform students by either making a calendar entry um, or some other reminder if this is going to be um, an online activity of when its due date is. So I'm going to go back to here, send my sample text. Please choose your ice cream flavor to be served in class tomorrow. And I'd like to display these horizontally, let's say. There are two different ways to display the um, you're going to want to play around with it and figure out how that fits best for your needs. One cool thing about choice is you can have it make, in essence, a visual representation of the information by uh, listing students' names of who decided, of who chose what, or you can do um, a purely visual representation of the, of the um, information through uh, having it make a, a, true, a true stacked, um, or not stacked, but a true bar graph. I only want the students to be able to make the choice once and leave it. I want to limit the number of responses that can be made. Remember, um, I'm going to give them four choices. And because I'm going to make four choices and I have 20 kids in class, I need to limit this to an absolute maximum of each one of these choices to five. Students who don't answer are just going to have to um, not have ice cream. It would be pretty sad. Sharing ice cream can be messy. So under option one, um, we'll have Strawberry, option two, got to have the old rocky road because that's good. Uh, option number three, we'll get some cookie dough. Who doesn't love cookie dough? And option number four, vanilla. And we'll also make that an option. We'll make that one because it's available vanilla. Um, Got to have the lactose-free op option, right? OK, so we have those um, those four options uh, equaling 20. Um, the other thing that's important here is how you're going to display your results. So I do want to display the results to the students, but only after they answer. And I want to uh, make those anonymous. Uh, if you had uh, shown this. Um, to do not publish the results, you might have a column for unanswered, and that would then show you 
um, who's not answering, well, I suppose we could do this in class as well, right? Because then they're going to say, hey, make a decision or you don't get any ice cream. So that's, that's a good one there. Finally, under activity completion, um, I want to know um, who's, who, who finished this on time because that's important for me to keep students uh, learning how to execute, right? So students can uh, manually mark, no, I want to change that to it's marked as complete after they've made a choice. So you can learn to begin using activity completion in Moodle because it produces really nice reports for you as a teacher to understand um, the executive um, function of, of students in your class and, and for them to track their own progress. Finally, uh, I want to save and display it. Uh, students would see a page very similar to this one if they went into this. In this case, um, I would choose the vanilla lactose free ice cream once I save my choice. There are 100 and um, 36 students in this class. We can see that 99% of them have not answered yet, but one person has chosen the lactose-free ice cream. So there you go.